You got anything yet? Not a sausage, Tony. Now, this is really weird because we've been excavating like mad. As you can see, they've got an enormous amount of dirt out already and nothing at all. But over here, where the metal detectorists have been working, they've got loads of lovely little metal finds, including this one, which they think is some kind of fastening maybe off a belt. It is Saxon, and it's got these lovely little pieces of gold decoration on. So, nothing there where we thought we'd find a load, and lots of stuff here. What's going on? Having a clue. Afternoon day one here at West Langton in Leicestershire, where we're looking for a possible Anglo-Saxon cemetery. And already we've cleared 10,000 square metres of oil seed rape, and we've dug a 100 square metre trench. And what have we got? Three interesting Anglo-Saxon finds. Not from the trench, but over there. And in the trench, nothing. So where are our Saxonists at this crucial time? In a different field getting all hot and bothered about a Roman villa. I don't understand you both. You are the most passionate about Anglo-Saxon England, yet you're drawn like moths to a flame to this Roman villa. When you're an archaeologist, you're interested in the origins of things. And if you want to know about the beginning of Anglo-Saxon England, how it all started and what its foundations were, you've got to go back to look at the late Roman period, haven't you? The key word is transitional, Tony. It's so convenient to talk about history in periods with sort of ends and beginnings. But, of course, on the ground at the time, there was, it was no sort of sharp break like that. You've got to remember that the Romans who leave are an absolutely minute sector of society. They're leaving behind lots and lots of ordinary people, including the kind of people who would have lived in this villa, wherever it is. And once the um, administration of society begins to, to collapse, I think that it all just gets too hard. And one day they wake up and they think, for heaven's sake, you know, is it really worth putting on the toga and sitting in this drafty stone <laughs> building? Why don't I wear the trousers? Why don't I live in one of those nice wooden buildings that's easy to heat? Um, and it's incredibly difficult to get that fine dating anyway in archaeology, and particularly in the 5th century, where we've got, uh, we've got no coins and we've got none of our usual means of dating. But I think this place offers us a possibility in that the villa and the Anglo-Saxon settlement might be in the same place. They might have stratigraphic archaeological relationships and therefore we can see the relationship between those two cultures. So we're now starting to look for evidence of Anglo-Saxon settlement in this field and how it might relate to the villa discovered here in the 1970s. But Helen's grand plans for the villa field are going to have to wait until tomorrow. Ah! Because back up in our potential cemetery field, Phil's now finding archaeology inside the area surrounded by our potential Iron Age ditch. Hello, my name's John Gator. Time Team is fan-funded by Patreon. This vital support helps us to make new episodes. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews, 3D models and masterclasses, plus lots more.